All right, praise the Lord. Amen. All the men, come on in, have a seat. I want everybody to get this today. 1 Kings chapter number 2. 1 Kings chapter number 2. 1 Kings chapter number 2. Amen. First Kings chapter number two. We're going to do first Kings, then we're going to do Hebrews chapter number two. Hebrews chapter number four, verse two. First Kings and Hebrews, two scriptures. Let's get our foundation scriptures, and then we're going to run on and see what the end look like. First Kings chapter number two and Hebrews chapter number four. Y'all ready? All right, let's do our smile next size. Turn to the person to your left, to your right. Show them your 32s, your 22s, your 12s, your 2s, whatever you have left to work with. Let's hold our Bibles up and let's do our confession. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I, am I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. I am a believer and not a doubter. I am a doer, not just a hearer. I believe the word from Genesis through Revelation. So let God be true, every man, a woman, a liar, in Jesus' name, amen. In 1 Kings chapter number 2, verse number 1, the word of God reads, Now the days of David drew near that he should die. And he charged or command Solomon, his son, saying, I go the way of the earth. Be strong. Therefore, improve yourself a man. And keep the charge of your Lord, your God, to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper and all that you do and wherever you what? Turn, that the Lord may fulfill his word which he spoke concerning me, saying, If your son take heed to their way to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, he said, You should not lack a man on the throne of Israel. I'm going to do a teaching today for Father Day called The Ingredients of a Great Father. I'm going to take it from this passage right here. The ingredients of a great, I, I, I'm about to say good father, but no, he said no, a great father. He just gave Solomon the ingredients to be a great king. Amen. See, now let's go to, now let's look at verse 2 again. Look at verse 2 again. He said, I go way of all the earth. Number one, be strong. Somebody say be strong. And number two, he said, prove yourself a man. Now, everybody look at me. There's a lot of folks walking around calling themselves a man because they got some babies. They're able to make, you know, they have a seed in them. They, they got some children. No, any male can have a baby, but it takes a man to raise them. Right. See, he said, you guys, he said, number one, see, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. It ain't easy being a man. See, I'm talking to the men. With women, will y'all just chill and, and listen in? Amen. But I'm talking to you. It ain't easy being a woman. Can I get an amen up in here? But it ain't easy being a man, especially in today, especially in no society. You remember, when you look back in the Bible days with Moses. Remember, Pharaoh wanted to kill all the babies. That's why they had to take Moses at three months old and put him in a in a basket and put him in the water. See, because the death is threatened by men. See, then you go to Jesus' day when Herod said, let's kill all the male children. Let the girls live. Let the, let the little girls live. But all the male babies from two years and below kill every last one of them. And then look at our, and look in today's society. See, you know how many Men, especially black men in urban cities, getting killed every day. Thousands, more, more getting killed 
in Chicago and Atlanta and my hometown Memphis and East St. Louis and Baltimore, all across the country than it is over there in the war. And that is nothing but the enemy. See, and I'm going to give you the ingredients of being a great man. I'm going I'm to give you to you from, from the Word. Go to Hebrews chapter number 4. Hebrews chapter number 4. The ingredients of being a, a great father. The ingredients of being a great father. It ain't easy. It ain't easy. But he told Solomon, Solomon, number one, I need for you to be strong. And number two, I need for you to prove yourself to be a man. How many of y'all heard this before? I'm the man in this house. If you are, you don't have to say nothing, partner. Amen. We know who's running this up in here. <laughs> Come on, I need for y'all to behave because I got so much stuff to give you. Somebody said, behave. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's all good. Uh, Hebrews chapter number four, verse number two, if you dare say amen. amen. He said, for indeed the gospel, the good news, were preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them. Everybody, the word supposed to do what? Profit you. The word supposed to do what? Profit. Here's the only way to profit you. It did not profit them. Why? Not being mixed with faith in those who what? See, the ingredient. See, if I bake a cake, come on, let's bake a pound cake. What's the, what's the, we need flour, right? We need sugar. We need eggs. It's going to be a lemon pound cake, so we're going to need some lemon flavor. We're going to need some, a whole bunch of butter. Because it's going to be, forget a lemon pound cake, it's a butter pound cake. That's what I like. What else we going to need? See, and we're going to need some other things to make it work. See, I'm going to give you the word. I'm going to give you the ingredients. But he said, if you don't mix it, it won't profit you. On, See, if I, came, if, if I came up here and we put all the ingredients up here to make a cake, come on, flour, sugar, butter, the flavor, the eggs, all the different things we need, and I tell you, that's okay, Brother bro John, this is a pound cake. Is that true? No, no, no. Yes, it is. It is a pound cake. But we ain't mixed it yet. So I tell him, okay, Brother John, huh? here go the sugar, eat it. Okay, Brother John, here go the flour. He'd be like, man, this is crazy. See, it don't taste good until we do what, family? See, you got to mix this. See, your mouth is the mixer. See, when you speak it, death and life, is in the power of your tongue. You got to walk around saying, I'm a strong man. I'm a man of God. I have the mind of Christ. See, you got to mix it for it to taste good. I'm going to give you everything you need to be great. I ain't just talking to the men. I'm talking to the women too, but especially the men. Mm -hmm. See, he said the gospel, the good news which they heard, it didn't profit them. Why, God? They didn't mix it with faith. See, a lot of if you come to church week in and week out, if you don't mix it with faith, it won't do you no good. You have the ingredients. You have everything you need to win with. See, there's no excuse. First ingredient. Come on, go to Proverbs chapter number one. First ingredient. You got to have a reverence of fear for God. That's the first thing, RJ. Listen to me, men of God. Listen to me. TJ, you guys, Grant, y'all listen to me. The first ingredient you got to have, you got to have a respect for God. See, and I can tell when people have a respect for God. Your, your words, your action tell me what you do. The first thing in having a, 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 to being a great father, to being a great man of God, listen to me, Bobby, you and Eric, you got to have a reverence of fear for God. See, I tell people the difference between Linda, Linda a, is a great mama, is a great woman of God. And my first wife, she got me when I got born again. See, why? I got a reverence of fear for God. My wife can tell you, if I don't meet God, you don't meet her. And you sure don't meet me. Not unless you're in one of them clubs somewhere, uh, <laughs> casinos. See, and because of my reverence of fear for God, see, my respect for God, 
She know I'm going to do the right thing by her, by my kids. If you don't have a fear for God, what's going to stop you? What's going to restrain you? So the greatest thing you can do is have a reverence of fear for God. See, I ain't doing things. What the Bible said, I love my son TJ catching it. He said, Daddy, whatever you do in the dark, it's going to come to the light. I said, yes, son. I like that when you hear the star quoting you and quoting the word. Let me tell you something, family. Let me tell you something. See, I don't do stuff because I don't want her to catch me or I don't want you to catch me. I know the Bible says God can see in the dark like he can in the light. Amen. See, so I have a fear for God. You hear me, Brother Bill? So you don't have to investigate me. Amen. See, see, let me tell you something, family. I think twice, I know once for sure, they, they audit my taxes. So when they audit you, the first, when they send you an audit, they saying you owe us some money. They ain't never seen audit your tax about, we owe you 10000 <laughs> Watch this, family. They ordered my taxes, and I gave them everything they need, and they sent me a check back. See, I ain't, I ain't trying to steal, because I know when I do my taxes, I know God watching me. See, if you don't pass the money test where a man treasure is, that's where his heart is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, when they audited me, I just gave them all the receipts that they need. And my wife can tell you, they sent us a check back. What I'm telling you to be a, if you, if you don't get this first one, the, the other nine won't work. You have to have a reverential fear for God. And when you have a reverence of fear for God, man of God, everybody going to know it. Because yes. when your boss call you in, other people call you in, try to get you to steal, to get you to cheat, you're going to say, I can't do this. They're going to say, why? Because that's wrong by God. What they're saying is he can't see it. You think he can't see it. See, Bernard, that's the number one thing. See, when I look at great men throughout the Bible, they had a reverential fear for God. Y'all remember Joseph? When Pharaoh's, uh, uh, Miss Potiphar wanted Joseph to sleep with her? See, Joseph said, I can't do this great sin and sin against God, not Potiphar. Y'all remember David, the greatest king ever lived? When David slept with Bathsheba? In Psalm 51, verse number 4, David said, against you and you only have I sinned. Hold on, David. You done slept with Bathsheba. You done had Uriah kill, but you're talking about you done sinned. Let me tell you something. That's the key. See, all throughout the scripture, when you look at great men and women of God, the number one thing they had, watch this here, Jane, they had a fear for God. I ain't talking about a fear for church. It's some church folks sitting right up in here cheat on their taxes. Cheat on their mate. Do some crazy stuff. I'm talking about a reverence of fear for God out of respect for him. You're going to do what's right. And when, you, when that line up, everything else is going to line up. Hallelujah. See, because now, watch here, I got God back in me. So when I have to make a decision, I know the Lord is on my side. Amen. Watch this here, family. I better get the rolling up in here. Come on, let's go to... Proverbs chapter number one. Proverbs chapter number one, verse number seven, family. Come on. Proverbs chapter number one, verse number seven. You ain't got to worry about your pastor doing something foolish. You, if you catch me on the news, it's going to be something good. <laughs> Amen. Pray the Lord. Proverbs chapter number one, verse number seven. It said the fear. That word fear means it's not an evil fear. It's a reverential fear. It's a respect. See, the reverence of fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Yeah. Knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Go to Proverbs chapter number 14. Proverbs 14, 26. See, and when you have a reverence of fear for God, you're going to have a prayer light. You're going to meditate on the word. You're going to have some praise and worship. See, you're going to spend time with God. In other words, when you have a reverence of fear for God, you're going to put him first. See, watch this. Here's the test right here. Let me tell you how you know you have a reverence of fear for God. What's the first thing you do in the morning? Do you turn on the news? I ain't asked nobody to answer that. <laughs> do you turn on the news? Do you get up and call your mama? 
Do you call your girlfriend? Do you take a shout? See, or do you wake up in the morning and say, Father, thank you, and you spend a few t- spend a, spend time with him? Say, God, now I commit this day unto you. You'll cause my thoughts to become agreed with your thoughts. So shall my plans be established. What you do every day when you first wake up? Do you make him your head, or do you make them, them uh, uh, the bacon and the eggs and, the, and all that other stuff first? And then you walk out the door, you go throughout your day, and then you just thank him, you know what I'm saying, on the way home or late at night when you sleep. When you have a reverential fear for God, you're going to put him first. Because he's going to make everything else work. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter number 14, if you're there, say amen. Let's start at verse 26. Proverbs 14, 26. Are you there? For it said, in the fear of the Lord, the reverential fear of the Lord, there is strong what? They're strong what? Now, everybody look at me. See, that's why Pastor Terry, I get my boldness from. Because I keep him first. I ain't scared of you. (laughs) I ain't scared of nobody. When you put God first, you're going to have strong what? You're going to have strong what? Now, people might have a problem with you. See? But because you put God first, you're going to have a strong confidence. That's enough to put him first. When you say so, see, people get intimidated, see, because you have a strong confidence. Watch this here, Ken, because you put God first. So when they tell you, I'm going to leave you, for real? <laughs> I don't want you to. Look at your name and say, I don't want you to. Amen. But I can make it. I don't want you to. I'm going to do things that, 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 that you shouldn't leave me. But because of God, I have a strong confidence because I keep him first. See, and men of God need to know that because as men, we are providers. And the devil tried to intimidate us in the area of our vocation. And when you have a strong confidence in God, you step up and say, my God going to supply all my needs according to, and it's going to be more than words. Amen. So 26 said, in the reverence of fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence in his children will have a place of refuge. The reverence of fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to turn one away from the snares of life. When you put God first, let me tell you something, I already know the answer to stealing. I already know the answer to sleeping with somebody else. No, because I did not know. No, because I did what? I didn't put God first. I already know the answer. I don't even have to pray about it because I put him first. When you come to me with some mess, I already know what to tell you if it don't line up with the word. It ain't happening, baby. Are y'all with me? See, because he's saying the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to turn away one from the snares of life. And the worst thing in the world, like I, this, this past week, watch this here. You'll love this here. Watch this past week. I was listening to the interview with Brian Williams with Matt Lahr about how he told a lie. He told a lie. Now, I like Brian. Mm-hmm. See, if it was up to me, mm-hmm. see, he would keep his job. Because I'm the church, I give him grace and mercy. He told a lie. I told my son TJ yesterday, I called him into the room. I said, TJ, looks into this interview. And he was very repentant from the heart. I said, TJ, you see what he did? He told, he didn't tell the truth. See, let me tell you something, family. When you tell the truth, see, when you, the truth don't need but one leg. But when you tell a lie, you got to keep, pretty soon, you gonna, people say, hold on now, what, what's the truth? See, when I tell you something, you can come back to me 50 years from now. I'm going to tell you the same thing I told you 50 years ago. But when people lie, they keep saying, over, see, they got to keep making up stuff. He told a lie and cost him one of the most prestigious jobs in the world. And guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Lester Holt stepped right into that position. See, that, that snare. A lie is a snare. And because he lied, he got exposed. Whatever's in the dark gonna come to the light. And Lester was the next man up. Step right into the slot. Mm. Family, when you tell the truth, you got God behind you. 
and you stand there and tell them, I know your job, they're going to say, I know you just bought that house. I know you got a card note. I know you got children going to the car. You look and tell them right in the face, and no, I can't do that. This is what I'm, I'm going to do this here and let them do what they got to do and watch God promote you. You're going to have a strong confidence. But if you lie, now, if you lie one time, they're going to get you to lie over and over and over. Now you live in a lie. And then walking up to me, I love you, Lord. He's saying, for real? He said, because you trust more in flesh than you do in me. My Lord. That's the number one thing to being a great father, to being a great man of God, to being a, being a great person only. God is your head. And you have a reverence of fear for him, and your action going to tell me whether or not you believe it. Because you're going to be challenged. See, you're going to be challenged on it. And you got to stand up what he told Solomon. He said, Solomon, I need for you to be strong, and I need for you to prove yourself to be a man. Come on, family, one more scripture on this. We're moving on. Proverbs 19, 23. No, you got to have a prayer life. You got to meditate. You got to praise and worship. You got to confess this thing. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 23. Watch this here. He said, the fear, the reverence of fear of the Lord leads to what? It leads to life, and he who has it would abide or remain in satisfaction. He would not be visited with, he ain't going to be visited with evil. See, when you tell the truth, Pat, God is on your side. See, God, the Lord is on your side. You ain't going to be visited with evil. See, don't you know, see, if I do something crazy, now Linda got to suffer. Now Matt and TJ got to suffer. And there, all those connected to me got to suffer because I didn't stand up and be the man God called me to be. See, because I didn't do the right thing. See, I know the right thing to do. He said, if you know the right thing to do and you don't do it, that's sin. See, that's sin. The first thing is you're going to have to have a reverence and fear for God. And let me tell you something, family. I had to make some decisions. That's why I, I, I get my pants cut big. I'm shaking, but I'm going to tell you. See, you can't see me shaking there because they're so, they so fat. They so, see, but I'm going to tell you. And I know the Lord is right there with me. That's why he tell uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, don't worry about their faces. You tell them exactly what I tell you. See, I got you, boy. I got you covered. That's number one. You got to have a reverence to fear for God. Number two, number two. Watch this here, family. Go to Joshua chapter number one. You got to make a choice to be strong. You got to make a choice to be, it's a choice. Life is choice driven. He said in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, I said before you, life, death, blessing, cursing, choose life. You got to make a choice to be strong. You know why? Because you got some strong women. I got some strong women in my congregation because I'm a strong man. And if I want a strong man, the strong women are run this church. See, if you ain't strong, that woman going to run that thing. <laughs> then you come in here, watch here. The whole church ran by women. I've been in church before what a, what a woman is running the church. Can I get an amen up in here? See, women, y'all strong. And don't, let me tell you, if you're a strong man, you ain't intimidated by a strong woman. A woman of God told me years ago, this is going to be worth coming to church. Watch, a woman of God told me uh, years ago, this is going to be good, family. Steve, you're going to need this. He said, Terry, it's two things a woman is looking for and she hopes she never finds. One is a run in her stocking. You see women always, they always check in and make sure. She's she looking for it and she hopes she never finds it. And I said, what's number two? A man that she can run. Wow. See? She told me that. Old woman from West Virginia told me that. She says two things a woman is looking for and hopes she never find Ken. Number one, a run in her stock. You see women, they're always looking because they, they hope. And number two, a man she can run. See, not a real woman. See, a woman is strong. See, and a real man intimidated by a strong woman. But you're going to have to make a choice to be strong. See, if not, they'll challenge you. I know, I know you got to be still because she's sitting next to you and, and they everybody up in here. 
See, you, see, when you're a man of God and God tell you something, you say, God told me, well, I ain't going. For real? Okay, God, you, you know, now what you're going to do? See, look what, look what he told Joshua. I'm in Joshua chapter number one, verse number six. If you dare say, say amen. amen. This, is what God told, this is what God told Joshua. He said, Joshua, I need for you to be strong, and I need for you to be a uh, good courage. Verse number seven. Only be strong, Joshua, and very courageous. Verse number nine. Joshua, have I not commanded you to be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid, Joshua. Do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I got that thing now. See, see, you're going to have to make a choice to be strong. See, a man, you're going to have to make a choice to be strong. Because your wife, women, in this church, and in other words, I've been all over the world. They'll push up on you. What you do? You push up on them back. I ain't talking about physically. You got to make a choice to be strong. And I ain't talking about strength to where you intimidate people, because I don't play that game. But I know what God told me, and I know what thus said the Lord. That's why I say the first ingredient is have a reverence of fear for God. How are you going to have a reverence of fear for him? You got to know his word. So when I tell you something, I'm telling you the truth. So when you say, well, I ain't going to do it, you, what you're saying is, I'm not going to obey God. I'm okay with it. God said, he told Samuel, said, Samuel, they're not rejecting you. They rejected me, partner. What you all upset about? See, you got to make a choice to be strong. See, watch this here, family. Watch this here. Let's go to, uh, mm -hmm. you got to make a choice. Go to Ephesians chapter number six. See, you got to make a choice to be strong. Because you got so many things, you got the enemy coming against you. Yeah. That's why I say it ain't easy being a man. But once you make a choice to be, see, that's the hardest part. Just make a choice. I'm going to be strong. I'm going to be everything God called me to be. That's what you're really saying. I'm going to be the man God called me to be. And then when you, if you got a strong woman, she'll submit to you. Because she know God is your head. You have a reverence of fear for God. My wife ain't calling me all day. Tomorrow. Where are you? Uh, I just call you all panicking. Hold on, but what's wrong? You, I ain't got time that you need to come be with me then. Why? Because I have a reverence and fear for God. She know I can go to China and come back, and I'm going to do everything to line up with the word. Amen. Because she's the only reason I'm going, because God sent me. See, now watch this here, family. This is how you be strong. In Ephesians chapter number 6, then God teach you. So Ephesians chapter number 6, verse number 10, if you're there, say amen. He said, finally, my, my brother, my sister, be strong in who? The Lord in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be to stand against the wild, the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual, hope of wicked, spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, Take up the whole lump of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, do what? Amen. Therefore, having girded your way with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of God's peace, above all things, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fire and dust of the wicked one and take the heaven of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit. This is how you be strong. See, a man of God told me years ago, watch this, Alan. He said, put this on, man of God, and never take it off. See, this is how you be strong. See, because, let me tell you something. Remember, family, you ain't wrestling against flesh and blood. So when somebody push up against you, they really push it up against God. Now, what you going to do? You got to be strong. And let me tell you something. Like I know about kids. My wife told me this here. She said, Terry, kids want discipline. They want rules. They want guidelines. I'm telling you as a man of God, see, your wife, your family wants somebody to be strong in this house. They want that. Amen. It says somebody knocking on the door at 12 o'clock, like, baby, go see who that is. <laughs> Amen. See, no. You got to be strong. And all it is, you got to make a choice. Just got to make a choice. I'm going to be everything God called me to be. How? I'm going to have a reverence of fear for him, and he's going to teach me. He's going to show me. And I'm going to stand there, and I'm going to do what he tells me to do. 
Come on, family. Number three. Number three. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now you got to prove. Remember he told Solomon, he said, I need for you to be strong. Now prove yourself to be a man. Go to James chapter number two. Number three is you got to prove yourself to be a man. Number one is faith without works is dead. See, a lot of people talk a good game. See, they talk a good game. See, see now you, you call yourself a man. You call yourself a man of God. Now prove it. You prove it by your action. James chapter number 2, verse number 17, if you're there, say amen. amen. See, he said, thus also, faith by itself, it does not have works, is what? Dead. Dead. See, you're proving yourself a man. But someone say, you have faith, I have work. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my, show you my first faith by my work. I don't have to say, hey, I don't have to prove that I'm a man. Amen. You ought, to be, you ought to be able to look at my action. He said, you can tell a tree by the fruit that it bears. Drop down all the way to verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So number one is, you're going to have to, remember he said, you're going to have to put some action to your belief. And when you put action to your belief, it turns into faith. Just like I told you about all the things in Greece and make a pound cake, See, it ain't one thing to believe. You in that scripture right there. Look at it. Look at verse number. <laughs> look at verse number 19. I'm in James 2, 19. You believe that there is one God. How many of y'all believe there is one God? Raise your hand. That's true. Put your hand down. You do well. Even demons believe and tremble. See, he ain't enough to believe. If you don't put action to your believing, that's what turned believing into faith. It ain't enough to believe. When you put action and belief together, it turns into, it turns into what? Faith. Come on in. It turns into faith. See, a lot of people think believing and faith are the same. They're not the same. It start off with believing. Amen. And when you act on what you believe, now you got, faith. come on, class. Amen. See, a lot of people walk around, I'm a man, I'm a, I'm, I'm a man. Hold on, partner, if you're a man, then I'm going to show you the rest of the ingredients that, that you're a man. <laughs> Let's find out whether or not you're a man, you're a great father. Number two, you got to love your wife. A great man, the Bible said, and, and uh, I'm going to quote a lot of these scriptures, and uh, <laughs> where am I at? In Ephesians chapter number five, verse 25, he said, husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. If you're a great father, if you're a great man, then I should love my wife as Christ loved the church. How did Christ love us? He died for us. So he told me, said, Terry, you ought to die for London. See, but she'll walk on me. Man, she ain't going to walk on you. <laughs> See, a lot of times, they'll take advantage of me. Then God said, they take advantage of you, they take advantage of me. He said, husband, come on, let's go to Ephesians chapter number 5. We'll read that. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Ephesians chapter number 5, verse 25. See, if you're a great father, then love. See, my kids are watching how I treat my wife. Amen. You're watching how I treat my wife. See, the first lady come in all, all messed up, bruised up, depressed. You be like, see, I'm responsible for that. Amen. Watch this. Uh, Ephesians 5, 25. Husband, love your wives just as Christ also did what, family? Love the church and gave what, family? Okay. See, if you, I want you to read the rest of that on out to verse 33. He said he gave himself a great husband, a great father, he give himself up for his wife. Amen. That's why it's no problem for her to follow me. Because she know I'm following Christ. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. Let, let me tell you something. It's wrong. This, this, gonna, this, gonna, this, gonna, this might hurt somebody. I hope it don't hurt your feelings. If you're in the church and you're a man of God, and women's not pursuing you, something wrong. Because everybody wants a, ch a, a church man. <laughs> See, most women, they they trying to drag folks out to the club or somewhere at the casino, bring them to church. you already in church. <laughs> See, let me tell you something, family. He said, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Amen. And see, if you're a man of God and you're doing the right thing, See, I know, I know men of God, they're real men of God in church. They ain't just men of God in church. They're they men of God, they're where they go. 
they got to beat folks off of them. Because they won't accept anything. They wait on God to bring them the right mate. See, they waiting on God to bring them the right mate. Amen. Amen. See, so you have to love your wife as Christ loved the what? Church. Number two, number two, you got to take care of your children, your family. You got to be a provider. See, that's another reason of being a great man. You got to be a provider. See, you got to take care of your children. And see, I grew up, it was just my mom. And we struggled. Because she had the only income making minimum wages with seven kids. Wow. Can you imagine if you had some help? Because on, on the most part, 90% of the time, men make more money than women. On for the most cases. So that's why they're still trying to, we stepping up to say, hey, I didn't even know it. They should make the same amount of money we make. See, but the employers, they give women less money than men. That's wrong. That's discrimination. See, and who's doing most of the work? The women. My wife tells me all the time, she said, it's funny how God give you all the wisdom, I give you all the, uh, the revelation, but I got to do the work. I told her, that's God. You might help me. Amen. She said, how God always telling you all this stuff, but I got to implement it? That's God, baby. Pray the Lord. Amen. If you are a real father, you are a real man, let me tell you something. I don't see, a lot of people say, well, I ain't have a father. No, I ain't have one. I ain't no better father than God. Right. See, some things you don't have to teach me, I'm going to take care of mine. If I don't, we go, I'm going to at least be there with him. And the greatest thing a man can do is to be there with his family. Right. See, I'm going to be there with my, I'm going to take care of mine. See, and then they want a whole bunch of stuff. Babe, we can't buy that right now. Put that stuff back. <laughs> See, put that stuff back right now. <laughs> See, that's a good father. I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. See, I'm going to show you that. The next one, you got to be a disciplinary. See, go to Ephesians chapter number 6. We're already there. See, you got to be a disciplinary. You got to be firm, beloved. See, David failed at that. See, David failed. The Bible said David didn't discipline his children. That's why Absalom tried to take the kingdom from him. See, a lot of us, we don't want to be disciplinary. You got to step up. And then we're letting the world tell us, no, put them over there and time out. It's going to be time out already. Y'all know what I mean? It's going to be time out already. Your mama, they didn't give us time out. And look how we turn out. Turn out. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, they teach them that you can pick up the phone and call, and call the, the, the cops, whoever, some on your parents. Right? When they come, make sure you, they, you go with them. Amen. 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 See, there's a difference between disciplinary and then being abusive. Yeah, that's right. that's See, that's wrong. I've seen people get abused, their kid. That's wrong. I want to go over there and fight for the child. <laughs> Amen. And you know it. It messed with your spirit. Right. See, but this is what he tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father. Honor your mother, which is the first command. With the promise, what's the promise? That it may go, may go well with you and that you may live long on earth. Here it go. I'm talking to Father. And you, Father, do not provoke your children to wrath, to anger, but bring them up in the training. Talking to Father, ain't talking to mamas. But bring them up in the training and the admonition of the Lord. Now, let me tell you something. I heard a man of God, uh, Bishop Jake, this is going to be good, Pat. Boy, I, James, this thing here, what I'm about to teach y'all right now is so good. I said, Lord, have mercy. That's me. That's me. That's me. <laughs> See, it ain't easy being a man. He was talking about how to be a radical leader. <laughs> See, but I'm talking about, see, I, I want to I I give you this here because I, I ate this up. He said the power of being a radical leader, but I want to talk about the power of being a strong father to being a strong man. So we understand that the word radical means to be extreme, to be different. See? Now watch this here. Watch this here. Definition of the word radical means a consideration, a considerable departure from the usual or the traditional. See, radicalism or being different is not celebrated initially. 
Now, y'all got to hear what I'm saying. Come watch it. I want you to go to, go to Hebrews chapter number 11. I'm going to show you. Radicalism, being radical, being different, being extreme, being a real father, a great man, it's not celebrated initially. Now, watch this here. Y'all going to catch this here. I want you to catch the spirit of it. Are you in Hebrews chapter number 11? Okay, but now watch this here. Listen to me. Everybody look at me. Radicalism gets a reward in hindsight. Right? Radicalism gets a, it's not celebrated initially. Radicalism gets its reward in hindsight. People catch up with you later. In other words, this is what I'm saying. When you a father, it ain't a sexy job to be a father. <laughs> because you got to be strong. See, when I talk to Zachary and Michelle, see, they got, they, got, they got a couple boys. When I talk to Michelle, she all compassionate and all oh, pastor. And, but Zachary, like, leave him alone. He's going to be all right. And then when you talk, catch both of them together, oh, she say things, I'd be like, oh, she's a mama. But his conversation is different. See, being a man, being a father, it's not a sexy job. See, you get your rewards in hindsight. People are going to appreciate you later on. Look at you. When you look back and you say, Mama, thank you. Daddy, thank you. See, when, see, to be a real man of God, to be a real father, you got to be different. You got to be radical. Because, see, you won't get your reward in real time speed. But your mama will. Mothers will. See, look at mama. They write cars about, they love mama. See, they get their, their rewards in real time speed, but not daddies. Daddies going to get theirs later. See, see, if you're going to be, I'm telling you when I heard this, I said, Lord, that's me. He said, yeah, that's why I let you hear it. See, mama's going to get their rewards in real time speed. They love mama. But, but daddies, see, a daddy, see, you can't be a real father. You can't be in there for the clap right now because you might not get the clap. See, I tell my children to do something, and my wife think I'm being too hard. But I check my spirit, and God said, no, stay with it. All right. See, see, mother, see, they going to reward you right now. But a good daddy, see, see, let me tell you something. See, hindsight is 2020. You got to eventually let the revelation, you got to let it catch up with you. They going to, watch this here, it's more for you as a father, watch this here, James, to be respected than to look for love right now. Right. Oh, I just said something then. See, most fathers are looking for love. Let me tell you something I, tell, I want you to know. I ain't look, I want my kids to love me, but I want them to respect me. Amen. See, I want them to respect me. See, I got to do, that's why he said, be strong. See, I got to say the right thing. I got to do the right thing when it don't feel right. And the whole house looking at you funny. He said, they going to catch up with you, man of God. They gonna, see, when you look at men of God in the Bible, why had you turn to, to uh, Hebrews chapter number 11? Watch this here, family. Look at verse number 7. Um, you should be in Hebrews eleven seven. 7. If you're there, say amen. He said, by faith, Noah being what? Divinely warned of things not yet seen, move with what? See, I'm moving with godly fear in my house. See, Noah built that ark for 120 years, and they laughed at him. Now they celebrating him. See, to be a real man of God, to be a real father, they might not celebrate you right now. It's going to catch up with you. See, a lot of us, we in there for the clap. We ain't going to get it right now. Not as a father, not as a man. Let me tell you something about radicalism. Let me tell you something about being a strong man. I'm walking in revelation. And people don't get it. But I know you don't supposed to get it. You hear what I just said? See, being a man of God, being a, I'm, no, I'm, see, I'm, I'm talking about as being a pastor. I'm talking about being a leader. I'm talking about being a father. I'm talking about being a friend. When you moving with God, people might not get it. Because they might not get it. Let me tell you something. You're in, you in Hebrews chapter 11. That's the heroes of faith right there. 
when God spoke to them, remember I told you last week, God called things that be not as though they. So when I tell you something, you're going to laugh at me. Because you think I'm out of my head. I ain't out of my head. I'm out of your head. <laughs> See, so what I'm saying is, it might look like I'm crazy. See, so to be a father, you got to be strong. You got to say what's right. You got to do what's right when they don't understand it because you know later on they're going to catch up and celebrate you. What you want right now is respect. See, and a lot of us not strong enough to do that right now, but it's in you. Every man that I'm talking to right now, it's in you already. That's why Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift that's in you already. See, stir it up. See, stir it up. Now watch this here, family. Watch this here. Watch this here. Watch this here. See, see, and, 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 and I heard this quote. See, see, the people talking about, I know what to be a man. No, 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 let me tell you something. You can't really understand who I am until you go through what I've been through. You hear what I just said? You really can't understand who I am until, unless you've been through what I've been through. It takes a lot to be a man. See, you have to stand up. See, I know my family don't understand, but they know I love them. See, I'm going out to respect right now. Because he said, Tara, train them up in the way they should go. And when they get old, they won't depart from it. I heard a preacher say years ago, everybody say years ago. He said, when I was a teenager, I thought my father was the stupidest, stupidest, what is it? Dumb. Dumb. He said, I thought my father didn't have a clue about life until I turned 20. And I looked back and said, Lord, this is the smartest man ever lived. <laughs> See, right now your kids think you don't get it. But as soon as they start turning 20 and 21, the light bulbs start going off. But most of us, we acquiesce to our kids. We do with them. We go in the mall and then, you know what I'm saying, got a basket full of stuff. No, baby. They just throw it in the basket. Get, when I go in the mall, see, they go to the mall with her. They don't go with me. Because we go in the mall, we already know what we want. See, I don't even go to Costco with my wife. Because when I go into Costco, I'm going to get this, that. She be stopping there every aisle. I, be, I text her, babe, I'm in the checkout line. See, because we're focused. We're driven. Lord, I got five minutes. Come on, family. Come on, I got I, I to keep this thing going. So we got to be disciplinary, but we got to be firm, but yet love it. The, the next one under that, we got to watch it. We got to tell the truth. Let me tell you something. If you, don't get, if you come to me, I'm going to tell you the truth. What did he tell John 8, 31, 32? He said, if you continue my word, you should know the truth. And the truth going to do what, family? Make you free. Man of God, man of God, tell your family the truth. Tell them. See, just like I, I watch people on American Idol. We, we, we watch American Idol. American Idol, yeah. Just, just with the last season. We, we don't watch the whole uh, uh, series. We just watch it in the beginning when they're they trying to make it because that's funny. <laughs> How you let your kid go up there and sing and you know this boy can't sing? You know this girl can't sing. And they walk out of there cursing and, and kicking. And you know what? Somebody should have told them at home. Baby, you can't sing. Y'all missed a good thing up in here. They ain't missed no good thing. Your mom and your daddy weren't strong enough to tell you, baby, you don't need to go to America either. You need to go somewhere else. You don't have that deal. See? Tell your family. That's why y'all come here, because you know Pastor Terry's going to tell you the truth. What's the truth? The word. I'm going to give you the word, because the word going to make you gonna make you free. So a lot of us don't tell the truth. And then a lot of them, Jack Nicholas said a long time ago, you can't, don't come to me if you can't handle it, because I'm going to tell you. Come on, family, let's move on. Number four, you got to put in the work. You can't be lazy. See, you can't be what? Lazy. See, ain't nothing worse than a lazy man. The Bible says if you don't work, you should. See, let me, watch this here, family. Watch this here, watch this here. Man of God, what's your name? 
Huh? Audrey. Audrey came to me last week and said, Pastor, will you pray for me? I said, what am I praying for? He said, pray that I, get, I got a job, but I want another one. I said to myself, that ain't a lazy Lord. He came to me this morning and said, what? I got it. See, see, most of us, see, let me tell you something, family. Let me tell you something. Let me give you this revelation. I'm believing you really shouldn't have but one job and pay you everything you need. I really, I'm praying you have your own business and you have people work for you. But there's a process you can go through. See, he said, don't be lazy. Don't let your kids be lazy. See, TJ, take that garbage out. Do this here. Do this. We just let our kids just lay around. You didn't lay around. Then you ask them to do something they got an attitude. You said, what? <laughs> Boy. <laughs> See, we had to get up every Saturday morning and clean up the house. I had to, your pastor had to wash dishes when it was my turn. It was, it was seven of us in the house, but my older brother was working. So that six weeks, that week came around every so quick. <laughs> And then you clean up the kitchen, and then all them sins go right back there and mess it up. Can I get an amen up in here? But we let our kids just lay around all day long. Did tell me what's wrong with them? On the phone all day long. Come on, family. You can't be lazy. See, don't be lazy. Come on, let's keep moving. See, don't be lazy. Number five, you got to take care of yourself physically. You got to eat the right food, and you got to get an annual checkup. See, let me tell you some family. 90% of the things that people are dying from now, they got a cure for. If you take your lazy self to the doctor <laughs> and let them, Pastor, I don't want no man going all up in me. Don't worry about it. It's going to be putting your butt in a hole if you don't. <laughs> See, 90% of the stuff that they, people are dying from the day. If they catch it, you work in the hospital. If they catch it early enough, they can cure it. I'm a man. Uh-huh, I know, I know. Women of God. Yeah. Take out them big insurance policies on them. <laughs> There's no reason for a man, what, 50 at the age of 50? By 50, you get an annual checkup every year. And you know you ain't eating right. And at least you ought to go get you a checkup. Amen. To see if you got high blood pressure, cholesterol, prost <coughs> prostate cancer, whatever. Get you a blood test. You should at least do that. Least. See, why? Because, let me tell you something, family. My wife lost her father early. See, a lot of people here, raise your hand, you lost your dad at an early age. See, look, put your hand down. When your daddy leave, that house changed. I'm telling you it changed. You don't have the protection. You don't have the provider up in there. You don't have, a, you don't have the security. I can't tell you how many men and women I've talked to as a pastor. When my daddy left, not just died, when he left home, this house changed. Wow. Men of God, women of God. See, my wife make the appointment for me. That's a good wife. <laughs> she make the appointment for me. You see what I'm saying? I said, babe, make it any day on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Because Tuesday, I stood all day for Bible study, and I show right up, doctor, do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. Don't be playing around up in that. But to... <laughs> <laughs> but it don't take that long, 15 seconds. <laughs> Amen. You know why? Because I want to be there for my family. I want to be there for my loved one. Amen. So you got to eat right. You got to drink water. Amen. See, I, I know a preacher. I know a preacher. I never didn't meet him, though. I, I met his wife, beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. She got remarried. She killed her husband because she was a great cook. She cooked all that food for him. Every time he, just every day, he had a buffet. <laughs> that man got so big, she killed him being a too good of a wife. Yeah. Friend, let me tell you something. You are what you eat. You know what I'm saying? This woman is a beautiful person. I love this woman. I don't even, I don't even know she didn't have this revelation because I ain't have it with the time. My wife said, Tara, she killed him. <laughs> All that food she cooked him. It's certain things Linda won't even let come up in the house. I don't even want it. Amen. Because you are what you eat. The Bible says your body is temple of Holy Spirit who lives inside of you. Glorify God in your body. Your body don't belong to you. 
You can kill yourself eating all that food. I remember growing up, y'all give me a couple more minutes. Y'all give me a couple more minutes. It's Father Day. It's Father, it's father Day. Let me father you. Watch this here, family. Watch this. I remember growing up in the hood, we ate breakfast. Come on. Lunch, dinner, and a midnight snack. I'm going to eat today when I leave church, and then I might have some late on. But we ate four meals a day, and then you want to know why we have high blood pressure, cholesterol, and then no exercise. <laughs> Ain't nobody in the hood exercise. If you see somebody running the hood, somebody shooting at them. <laughs> or the cop chasing them. You don't see no black. In our neighborhood, you see people walking and jogging and running. You don't see that in the hood. When I saw it in the hood, old women walking, I said, ain't that cute? <laughs> they want to know what's wrong. Our hearts, uh, you know what I'm saying, stopped up and all that stuff. No, take care of yourself physically. And you a fool, you let them sit up there and eat all that stuff, and then you're going to struggle when they go. And you're sitting there watching it. Mm. Number six, bring your family to church. How are you going to be a man of God and leave? You come to church and leave your family at church. Your kids say, my dad, do I have to go to church? They say, no, baby, it's okay. No, everybody, let me tell you something. My children already know when we, when we get up, everybody coming to church. Because I'm training them in the way they should go. They ain't even asking they miss. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Because they're going to get something in here, going to train them the rest of their life. Yeah. See, everybody in the house needs to get up. Yeah. Amen. Number seven. Find a good role model. Find a good role model of a family man. Come on, go to Philippians chapter number four. Find your role model. Find somebody who's a father or a man of God, and you pattern your life. Watch them. Mm -hmm. I wait till Joshua. He said, Joshua, the same way I would Moses, I'm going to be with you. Joshua with Moses for the year. See, find you. That's God. Find you a role model. Why just turn your turn? Philippians chapter 4, verse number 9. Watch this here, family. What Paul said. You ready? The things which you have, come on, learn. The things which you have received. The things which you have heard. And the things you saw in me. These do. And the God of peace is going to be with you like he was with me. Find your role model. Somebody who already living like you want to live. And then pattern your life after them. Number eight, protect your family. Matthew 12, 29 says, how are you going to enter a strong man's house unless you tie him up first? Let me tell you some family. You got to protect your family. They need to know when they come to the house, you're the first one at the door. You ain't talking about get them, baby. Don't, don't let them talk. No, you. Amen. You protect your family. Number Nine, take breaks. Take breaks. Don't be a workaholic. Keep balance. See, go to Matthew, chapter, Mark, chapter number six. Take breaks. In other words, go on vacation and take your breaks. See, work kill people. You need to take some breaks. That's right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Brother John, Sister Deb just come off a cruise. Amen. Amen. Man, take your breaks. A man of God told me, told me this years ago. He said, Terry, take you four uh, weeks off every year. He said, because people will kill you. You see, you better take your breaks. See, you better take your vacation. You see, they call it, is it staycation? Where you just stay at the, in, in the city? You don't have to go nowhere. Just, just, man, give me my vacation. And just stay right here in the city. You know what I'm saying? Go to a hotel. Just shut everything down. Where are we going, family? Mark chapter number 6, verse number 631. If you're there, say amen. Look what Jesus said. 631 said, and he said to them, come aside by yourself to a deserted place and do what? Rest a while. For there are many coming and going, and they, and they did not even have time to eat. So they departed to a deserted place in the boat by them. See, that's what y'all just did. And turn them telephones off. Amen. Fam, you got to take your breaks. If not, you're going to shut down. And number 10, the last one, go to Hebrews chapter number 5. Last one, family. We out of here. 
Know that God has your back. Know that God has your back. Hebrews chapter number 13, verse number 5. Know that God got your back. God got you. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 13, 5. If you're there, say amen. amen. He said, let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, what God? I would never leave you, Terry, nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will, I shall not fear. What can man do to me? You got to know the Lord got your back. The ingredient of a great father. Give the Lord a hand, praise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One last thing, family, we're going to pray. One last thing. It ain't easy being a man. See, they're going to understand you later. Do what you got to do right now and let the chips fall where they may. One of the things God told me years ago, y'all ready for this? Write this scripture down. You can have it in your, write the scripture down. Where we going? Psalms 105, Psalms 105, verse, not Psalm 105, verse 19. Let me make sure. Psalms 105, verse 19. I want you to have the scripture. Powerful scripture God taught me. Psalms 105, verse 19. The Bible says, watch this here. When you do what, God, what I just told you, the Bible says God going to confirm his words. With, he going he to confirm his word in your life. So it says he gonna, God going to prove his word. If you make a choice to be a strong man, God going to, watch what it says. The Bible says the word going to prove you true. That's what it says. Out the Amplified Version. The CEV Version said the word going to prove you true. So you're going to you gonna have to be radical. You're going to have to believe that in hindsight, they're going to understand. They're going to catch up with you later. Amen. Right now, they may not understand, men of God, but they're going to catch up with you later. Yeah. See, when you look at great men of God, everybody look at me. Dr. King, doc, how many of y'all consider Dr. King a great man? But how many of you know, it's a lot of people, when he was doing his time, hated him. It's a lot of people excommunicated him. It's a lot of people, leaders didn't want to have anything to do with Dr. King. But every city you go in right now, they got a Dr. King High School, a Dr. King Boulevard. A, now he's celebrated. Why? Because now we didn't caught up with him. See, great men ain't, ain't celebrating real-time speed. They celebrated years later, most of the time when they're gone. We recognize that, Lord, when, like Jesus, we had greatness before we didn't know it. Like J Jacob said, the Lord was here and I didn't know it. They don't recognize great men until they're gone. Men of God. Men of God. Be who God called you to be. Come on, women, celebrate the Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hello, family. I'm Pastor Terry Starks of Fresh Start New Beginning Christian Church. I want to thank you for tuning in today. We hope that you heard some that truly make a difference. I know it's going to make a difference. For the word of God is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Now, the man of God, I need for you to do something for me. I need for you to sow a seed into the ministry. That if you have a local church, your tithe belongs to your local church. But if you don't have a local church, you can tie directly into Fresh Start New Beginning Christian Church. Now, everyone can sow an offer. I'd like for you to go to our website which is fsnbcc.org, and click on the donate button, or there's an address below on the screen. You can send it directly to the ministry. And remember, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, whoever's in Christ is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, old things have become a fresh start, a new beginning. See you next time.